All right. Um, so what I have is I have the first couple terms in my sequence. And what I want to do is calculate the sum using my sigma notation. OK? So um, first thing we need to do is we need to see how many terms. This is obviously a partial sum, right? Because it's not going on and on forever. So let's see how many terms am I calculating. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we know that I'm only going to calculate six terms. Yes? Now, here's where a lot of students make their mistakes. They say, well, the first term, Ms. McGlogan, probably is going to be 3. Right? That's where we're going to start. Um, but first of all, let's kind of even make sense. If we start at 3 and then we went to 6, then obviously we didn't cover all six terms. So maybe we go to 9. Okay, we start at 3, and then we go to 9. That's going to calculate for six terms, right? I'm saying this is a common mistake students make. They say, oh, the first number's 3, right? Your first number's 3, and then there's six terms. So let's say, oh, let's start it. Let's go to 9 then. But here comes our problem. If I'm going to calculate 3, so they say, all right, so if you plug in 3, you say, all right, here's the first one. So you could say n, right? n gives you 3. Then what do you need to get to give you n squared? How are you going to get to negative 9? What? You can multiply it by negative 3. But do you have to multiply it? And then, so here's where the problem is. If you plug n in for 3, right? That works for this one, just n. But then you get to the second sum. How do I get to? Because remember, now I have to plug in 4, right? You first do 1. 3 is, three is your first term. Then the next term you're plugging in is 4. Can you do something to 4 to get to 9? No. All right, so we need to think about this. When you guys are calculating your sum, all right, start with 1. And we know that there's six terms, which we've talked about. Okay. Now, I know our first term is 3. But remember, we have to plug in 1 to give us 3. Now, first of all, I automatically notice that I have alternating signs, correct? So automatically, when I see alternating signs, I know my rule is going to be negative 1 raised to the n. However, if it's 1, that's going to make this negative. So since it's even, that means my first term has to be n plus 1, right, to make it even. OK. Because 1 plus 1 is squared. Negative 1 squared will make it a positive 1. All right, so now we know we have, a, we know we have 3. And what you guys should notice is here's 3. Forget about the negative signs. 3, 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the 4th, 5th, and 3 to the 6th. So we can say that 3 is going to be my base. And then let's say if I put a 1 in here, does that give me 3? Yes. If I put 2, right, because you're going to go to 2, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 6. If I put in 2 there, does that give me 9? Yes. 3? Yes. So your formula in this case is going to be negative 1. I don't know why I did n. It's i. Negative 1 to the i plus 1 times 3 to the i. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, your first term, this is what you're plugging in to your rule. All right, and then you go all you start at this term, and then you go all the way up to your terminal term. Okay, any questions on this one? No. Okay. So guys, it just takes some practice to getting used to. You guys are gonna have to try them out. 